And greetings, friends around the world. This is Peter Salemi, and welcome to the Watchman program. Just what are the origins of the Christmas tree? Now that we have reached December, the beginning of December, many people are starting to decorate their tree, their houses with Christmas trees, because it is the tradition in the Western world at the Christmas season to put Christmas trees in our homes and decorate them with lights and orbs and bulbs and tinsel and so on. But what are his origins? Did the apostles ever venerate Christ with a tree on his birthday, which is December 25th? And is the birthday of Christ December 25th? Now we deal with that subject in another video broadcast that's on our YouTube channel that you can access called When Was Jesus Born? And you can see that on our YouTube channel. But on this broadcast, we're going to zero in on the origins of the Christmas tree. Where did it come from? Have you ever looked it up? Have you ever looked it up in an encyclopedia and find that the Christmas tree was actually around way before Christ was ever even born? That the Christmas tree actually goes all the way back to a time in the book of Genesis, in the 10th chapter, where we read of a man called Nimrod. And this Nimrod began to be a mighty one in the earth. And that's in Genesis, the 10th chapter and verse 8. And he had a kingdom or an empire. It says the beginning of his kingdom was Babel or Babylon. Now, during this time of his empire, he was a mighty one in the earth, as it says. He was the very first world politician, the, world, the world's first leader. And because this man was on a power trip, he and his wife set up a system of worship. And of course, they were the ones who were being worshipped. And this system of worship is called the Babylonian Mystery Religion. And in this religion, as the story goes, when Nimrod died, he would return every year on his birthday as the spirit. His spirit would return on his birthday and his birthday was December 25th. And during that time, because of his return, they would set up trees and they would decorate these trees and they would put presents underneath these trees as a gift to the god Nimrod. So it was a system of worship to continue this man's legacy after he died. Now I want to show you a picture of Nimrod found uh, in an ancient Babylonian drawing of Nimrod here and as you can see he's holding a tree and the tree represented Nimrod because he would return on his birthday every single year on December 25th and so when they constructed this tower of Babel God confounded their languages and scattered them all over the world but that system of idolatry continued with them but this time Babylon, because of the changing of languages, was called, or he was called by different names. But one of the names was Baal. And we find tree worship all over the world. And one of the names Nimrod was called was Baal. And Baal worship involved the worship of trees. And in Deuteronomy 12, other places, God condemns the practice of worshiping under every green tree. So when the Israelites came into the promised land, they found these people worshiping Baal, and eventually the Israelites ended up worshiping Baal themselves. And so when they got taken away, when God took them away because of the worship of trees, in 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, it even mentions it. Why? One of the reasons why God kicked them out of the land was them worshiping under every green tree. And of course, the Israelites got taken into, they scattered and fled up into Europe. And in Europe, we find them worshiping trees, the sacred oak tree. Now, one of the origins of the Christmas tree was St. Boniface. St. Boniface was a missionary who came among the Germans in northern Germany and they were cavorting around an oak tree and they were going to sacrifice a little prince to this oak tree because Baal worship also had human sacrifice and they would sacrifice princes, whoever, to these trees. 
And so he chopped the tree down, showing that this tree had really had no power. And then a little tree sprung up and he said, see, that represents Jesus Christ. And so the same system of worship was still there, but instead of doing it to Jupiter, which is Baal or Nimrod, they would do it to Jesus Christ. And as the pagans started coming into the Christian religion, so-called Christian religion at that time, they, they brought in their system of worship. And one of those things that they brought in was the worship of oak trees. And the Christian church accepted it. And instead of calling it the worship of Jupiter or Baal, they called it Christmas trees. So they would put a nice big bow tie on it even though it was paganism, they would call it Christian. And they did it to Christ instead of uh, condemning it and saying it's pagan and you shouldn't do those things anymore, that we should follow what the Bible says. Instead of saying that, they said, yeah, come on, bring it in, and we'll just do it to Christ instead of Baal or Jupiter who, or whoever. And so this is how the Christmas tree got brought into the so-called Christian Religion. Now, when I come back, I want to show you a couple of prophecies about the Christmas tree and what God says about the Christmas tree. And should we mix paganism with Christianity? I want you to get you this free booklet. Is Christmas Christian? Absolutely free of charge. All you got to do is download it off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. Now, if you want to write or call or text your orders for this booklet, Bill Pizzinas, We'll give you the addresses and phone numbers where you can obtain this free material. To get your free literature, please write to us at the British Israel Church of God. Our Canadian address is 6 Hostead Crescent, spelled H-A-W-S-T-E-A-D, Crescent, Brooklyn, Ontario, Canada. Postal code L1M2M5. Our USA address is 171 West Barbara Avenue, Pahrump, Nevada, postal code 89060. Or log into our website at www.britishisrael.ca. Or if you'd like to reach us by telephone, Pastor Peter Salemi's phone number is area code 905-447-4415. Or myself, Bill Petsinas, at area code 416-898-7407. All right, welcome back. Get that free material downloaded absolutely free of charge at www.britishisrael.ca or you can write or call and we will send it to you absolutely free of charge. So get that material today. All right, there's a prophecy in Jeremiah the 10th chapter and in this prophecy it is directed to a people called the House of Israel. Now who is the House of Israel? Time and time again, we have been saying that the House of Israel is the United States, the British Commonwealth of Nations. So it doesn't involve the House of Judah, the Jews. Do the Jews put up Christmas trees? No. They never have and they never will. They are not so-called Christian. They believe in the Old Testament, the Talmud, their traditions, and it doesn't involve Christmas trees. Yet God says here, thus says the Lord Eternal, that speaks unto you, O house of Israel, thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. God says, don't learn the way of the heathen. Don't pick up their practices. He says, don't learn, do not learn the way of the heathen. Now, none of this makes a bit of difference. Just an aside, this makes no difference whatsoever if there is no God. If there is no God, then religion is purely a, de a devising of man. It's all made up. It's all made up of man, and there is no God. But if there is a God, and there is, and you can prove it, and the Bible is the word of God, if he thunders out, learn not the way of the heathen, and he says the customs of the people are vain, well, then it matters a great deal, doesn't it? He says, for one cuts a tree out of the forest, well, what's the tradition every single year at Christmas time? To go into the forest with an axe, cut down a tree, and bring it indoors. God says here, one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe, 
They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it move not. You know, a little platform there that they put the tree on. They decorate it with silver and with gold. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, but because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. You know, a lot of people that know the origins of the Christmas tree and what it stands for, they get all on edge when they walk into a room and they see a tree beside them. And God says, don't be afraid of them. They have no power. As the Bible says, the idol is nothing. Don't worry. They have no power. So there's no reason for you to get all bent out of shape because you're in the same room with a Christmas tree. But notice God says that the house of Israel does this. Well, where do we find this custom? Well, among the United States and the British Commonwealth of Nations, the house of of Israel and God says don't do it it is vain empty stupid actually if you look at the origin of this word vain it says a pursuit after wind trying to grab in your hand a handful of air which is utterly impossible God says it is vain it's stupid don't do it now a lot of people reason that, well, as long as we do these things to Jesus Christ, what does it matter? I even saw evangelical preachers on TV actually saying to people, oh, all you humbug preachers out there, I remember this was uh, Jack Van Impey. Jack Van Impey was on television in the 90s, and he said, all you humbug preachers out there, and he'd look at the camera like this. I don't know why they do that. They look at the camera, all you humbug preachers out there uh, who are against Christmas. Think of the Christmas tree as uh, the cross that Christ hung on for your sins. And I just couldn't believe my ears. Because this man professes to know the Bible backwards and forwards, and he's telling us to take a pagan symbol and put a spin on it, a Christian spin on it, and think of it as the tree that Christ hung on for our sins. Now, what does Christ say about that? Are we supposed to do that, take pagan symbols and put a Christian spin on it so it suits our religion? Notice what God says here in Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter. Verse 29, it says, When the eternal your God cut off the nations from before you, whether you go to possess them and you succeed them and dwell in their land. Here is Israel moving in to dispossess a lot of these pagan heathen nations, and they had their customs. And one of those customs was Baal worship, worshiping under every green tree. He says, Take heed to yourself, be careful that you that you be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before you, and that you inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so, I will do likewise. Now what's the context? Notice verse 31. You shall not so do unto the eternal, your God. So God's saying here, don't inquire after their gods of their system of worship, and then take that system of worship and worship me. God says, don't do that. For every abomination of the eternal which he hates have they done to their gods. For even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fires to their gods. And there is human sacrifice related to the so-called Christmas tree. Whatsoever thing I command you, observe to do it. You shall not add to it, nor shall you diminish from it. God says... No matter what Frank Sinatra used to sing, do it his way, not your way. And don't add to my religion. Don't take away from my religion, God says. And that's exactly what many of these evangelical preachers have done. Jack Van Impey, I couldn't believe what he was saying on television, telling people that the Christmas tree represents the cross of Christ. Absolutely unbelievable what he said. Absolute nonsense. It doesn't symbolize the cross of Christ at all, but 
symbolizes Nimrod and his resurrection and it symbolizes a pagan god and has nothing to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get this free booklet. Is Christmas Christian? It goes in the origins of the Christmas tree. When was Jesus actually born? Uh, you know, the Yule log, you name it. It's all in this free of charge. Log on to our website, BritishIsrael.ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends, and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.